this episode, we're chopping that thing. 1936 Ford 5 window coupe. So what I'm going to be doing is a traditional style three inch chop. So come down three inch front and back, middle, everything nice and square. But first we got to get rid of the windshield and some of these other items that we don't need. That'll be in the way. I'm going to leave the dashboard. It's not working. But this will be getting cut out. This is for the uh, roof panel here. We have a new roof skin. We're going to stick in there. Clear out some of those little items we don't need. Nothing too exciting. The back here. Let's see, probably have to pull this out as we won't be needing it. Start getting the glass out. <clears throat> Gotta try to figure out how to get the seat out of this thing. The seats are wood, the thing weighs a ton. This is actually a very nice seat. I don't know why it's got a Mexican blanket on it. Seats have a pretty interesting design. This is all wood with a metal base there. On some of them, it actually flips up. Actually, this is supposed to flip up too. It's got the hinges. I guess they're just missing. Well, let's keep digging. Oh, look at that. That is a very nice and solid car. Looks like it may have had a patch panel of some sort up there. Other than that, that baby's rust free. Nice way to get that out. Yeah, this car doesn't have the rolled down rear window, so that makes things much easier. So we have to get this panel out. So what we're going to do is move the window down. So I'm going to cut this whole panel out, probably right here, and then probably section it here at some point, move things around a bit. At least that's my general plan, until it changes. So these have a crank out window, which actually doesn't appear to work. Check that out. This is the air conditioning here. Just the window opens up. This is looks like it's stripped. I figure out how to get this thing out of here. They got hinges right here that tilt the window up. So I'm gonna figure out how to move those. Hmm. I don't know how to get it out. I'm sure it comes out. I just don't know what it is. You know, the amount of engineering in these things never ceases to amaze me. I mean, what they were able to do with relatively 
crude tooling in comparison today is just it's just amazing and everything is a work of art I mean even just a simple door hinge or window hinge is amazing looking it's just you know people cared back then everything now is junk Well, it's disassembled and now it comes that time that uh, nobody likes and that's stripping the paint off it. Uh, so I'll be using uh, a foam backing pad and a hook and loop 80 grit to uh, get the paint off. And so I find that it works uh, the fastest without doing uh, that much damage. You know, it's all about being light and then finishing back with uh, the DA. This, a wire brush, some cussing, we'll get it done sometime. So we're going to be cutting it here, so I'll strip this paint off here. I'm going to cut it through the center here, so we'll just get this area. And then we're going to cut it somewhere in this ballpark, roll down all the way around. So I'll get all that and then run the window because it's going to come out. So not really too much. And then the entire uh, roof filler was going to come out and I have a new panel. Uh, that's going to go in there. Well, that cherry has been popped. Now she belongs to the night. I think that's enough uh, pain and misery for today. Ugh. <sighs> really should do that outside. While doing my research, I was able to find some pretty simple instructions. I believe these are from CarCraft from back in the day. As you can see, it's just simple slice and dice, just like our second grade uh, art class. A little paper mache and we're good to go. Well, I got all the paint stripped off, so now we can start uh, fooling about and laying this thing out. So the back window here, I don't want to cut it too much. We're going to cut three inches out of the top, but I don't want to cut three inches out of the window because the window would look, you know, weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the window down an inch and a half here. Move it up, I don't know, maybe an inch, half inch, I'm not sure. And then maybe we'll take a center, uh, a little bit of the center here. Not 100% sure yet, but it's definitely going to move down. That will get it to line up better. With the side window so right now you kind of see they're on the same plane so i don't want to screw with the rear window too much in this area here we're going to take we're going to cut somewhere in this area here we'll take three inches out cut it all along the back here about an inch up so that we got room to work the metal and this will all slide down underneath we'll scribe it trim it and that'll be uh good to go this area up here we're going to cut somewhere about right here wherever the flattest part is and then trim it here and pull this piece out because it's going to have to move forward and this will be extended a little bit and then finding the uh the flattest spot of the roof where it's going to be the least amount of trouble we're going to take and cut it 
and then this will go back this will go forward as it cuts we'll put a little filler piece here same thing with the doors we'll cut three inches out of the post here and then cut the rain gutter out which I'll probably do first and then we have a new panel for that see easy peasy just a jigsaw puzzle with no uh, instructions so starting with the uh, the a pillar here we're gonna try to find the best place to cut you know where it's gonna be the same width top and bottom so it goes back together the easiest I have my uh, little pattern here that's exactly three inches so it's a matter of just where do we find that it's going to fit correctly so that's where we'll whack it so it lines up there and it should be an easy transition to come down and meet up hopefully uh, on the doors here, same thing, trying to find the best spot to trim it out. So it's kind of got a narrow little dip here, so we cut it straight across that. Somewhere right here. The more time you spend uh, getting the initial cuts right, the much easier it goes back together. It's all just math. Start there. So we'll just take and cut it free here, cut it free here, and pull this piece out, and then we'll trim it to fit as, as we go. We won't actually take a, a section out of this. Because even though we're taking three inches out of here, which is at a slant, doesn't necessarily mean it's exactly three inches out of here. So we want to definitely wait for this. Same with the doors. A piece of tape measure works, works good for following that. So right here, we're gonna have to move this over here. So we wanna cut it the best place, which is gonna be the top of this arch, which is right there. So we'll cut that down. Then trim this this direction. And then. So looking in this area here, we've got, you can see a body line. Body line follows here, and then it flattens out in this area here. So we don't want to mess too much with this if we can avoid it. So we're going to want to be in this area here to begin with. So we'll sneak in somewhere in this area here. And then maybe come up like that somehow, something like that. Yeah, Mike Bellows uh, recently did one of these. So I'm kind of copying what he did because we really like the way that chop looks. So nice proportions, nice, clean, you know, not a lot of pieces that had to be cut and made. So hopefully uh, following what he did, uh, this will work out and I don't screw it up that bad. This will be extended about two inches, so we need to 
find the sweet spot, which is about right there. Oh, Sharpie's broke. There we are. Beep. Let's put it to the test. So we want to cut it about an inch above. That way we got room to work the metal. So I think that'll be enough. Well, it's not quite Picasso, but it's close. So thinking about the back window. So currently this window is 11 and a half inches. We're gonna take three inches out of it, which makes it, well, three inches shorter. So that makes it eight and a half inches. So coming over here to our rear window, we are nine and a half inches. So if we take one inch out of this window, then this size window will match the size of the quarter window, and the size of the door window after they're chopped. So scooting this down an inch, scooting this up an inch, and an inch out of here, I think, is what's going to work. You know, we're doing a traditional style chop, which means it's even front and back, split in half, that'll go back, that'll go forward, just a nice traditional look. Now they of course come in all kinds of different designs. You, know, you have a hot rod chop, which would be more of like a forward slant, a little more to the front and the back. You got a tail dragger, you know, chop where you, the back would sort of slope down. Then you got, uh, you know, stuff like James Headfield's uh, iron fist, which is completely different. That was built by Blue Collar Customs and is probably the best looking chop, in my opinion, on a 36 Ford. But we are copying Mike Bellows. We'll trim it right here. At least somewhere in that area. I'll do that when it's off the car. It'll be easier to work. So once it's cut free, we can slide this down here and then score it and then match it that way. Same with the top. We'll slide it up, score it, and then uh, everything should match up. So right here, the window's going to come down and cut to here. Now if I cut it straight down, when this slides down, I'm going to have that gap there for the uh, thickness of the cutoff wheel. So if you take and cut it at just an inward taper, then when it comes down, it'll close up that, uh, that gap from the saw blade, and then you'll you know, have a better weld. decided to move that line a little bit lower. A little bit closer to the belt line, I think it'll be a better weld. Or not, I don't know. Now this is not the best way to do this, but this is my way. In fact, there really is no best way. I mean, all depends on what you're doing and how you want to come about it. But I'm trying to make it as easily and simple to lay out as possible so it goes back the same way with the least amount of fabrication, welding, etc. This is actually a relatively simple chop in comparison to 
say like a 40 coupe or something like that um, and we're actually retaining all the uh, the roof panels and everything else so in the scheme of things this is pretty simple so using my high dollar uh, measuring tool here trying to find the best place to cut this so right here in the window is a spot where it just starts to curve up and that's that's where I want to start This is the time when going slow and uh, thinking it out really pays off. At least in theory. And I'm just taking a movement in my tape measure over as I go. Because if I was to just take it and put it down here, it actually wouldn't match up. So, so that's the chunk right there. So right here is the bottom of the drip rail and it actually sticks out just a little bit to where down here it's a little more flat, but I have full access behind it so I can make this piece match this piece pretty easily. Just about ready to cut. But first we need to brace it up. So I'm gonna put a brace between here and the other side from here over there square it all up actually I'll probably cut the back window out first just so I have access before uh, I block it all with bracing so before we weld everything in definitely want to check the door gaps using my wooden stick here I mean everything is good until you get down to here starts to get kind of funky. Now I'll notice that this line here is not lining up perfectly. But over here, we're actually pretty consistent. And up here, my gap along the jam gets kind of funky. Gets real tight up here, real tight right here, But the other side, passenger side, fits just fine. Also, I've noticed that we are missing the dovetails. You know, they are gone. It does have them on the passenger side, so I'll just have to take those off and stick them on the driver's side before I start doing the driver's door. Make sure everything lines up right and just be conscious of it. But we can correct all of the little, the little things while we've got everything cut apart. One of the problems with the 36 Fords is the hinges are welded to the door. So everything is non-adjustable. These have actually been pulled out and removed, but there's no way to adjust in here anyway. It doesn't make a difference. So the only way to fit the doors is literally is to edge grind and weld everything. See passenger door. Passenger door fits real nice here. And it gets a little funky in the top here. So we can correct this. Plus it sticks out a little bit. The door's probably bent. See? From there to there. So we can we can give that a little uh a little love what we got apart. Taking and chopping a running, driving, let alone painted car is a whole different process than something that's a full ground up build. Um, if this was a full ground up build, it'd be all stripped down, we could stick it in a jig, square everything up as we go. It's not as so easy on something that you're driving, let alone it's got paint and everything else on it. But we can get things as tight as we can possibly get without uh, causing, you know, other major problems. Try to protect the paint as much as possible. I mean, I don't think it's that important in the scheme of things. I'm gonna be changing the grill and the tail lights and some other stuff, so it's all gonna get screwed up regardless. However, you know, I do try, and the fact that I'm a clumsy ass, I'll just be running into the thing anyway. 
Um, everything is going to be TIG welded and uh, just sanded smooth, so I'm not super concerned with sparks, but you know, got to give it an effort, right? So before I put the bracing in, I'm going to get in there and chop out the rear window brace and the package tray and get them out of the way. That way I don't have to do a jungle gym action with the bracing. Those are one of those things you learn from experience. Oh, motherfucker. <clears throat> Not nearly as nimble as I used to be. Also, pro tip, when you go to buy uh, safety glasses, buy the yellow ones. Because uh, when you take them off and put them down, they're easier to find. Those damn clear ones, it's like Wonder Woman's secret jet. When you park the thing, you can't find it. Yo. Yeah. Now that it's all braced up, it's uh, time to start cutting. But that'll be in a couple days because I'm going to Los Angeles. Well, it'll be a few days for me, it'll be a couple minutes for you, uh, going to the Grand National Roadster Show, so see you in a minute. gonna come to California you got to go to the beach all right enough of that sappy uh, crap let's go look at some cars Absolute perfection. Probably fiberglass.
Well, that's a wrap on that. Back to work. Well, back from California. Time to get back to work. Let's uh, cut the top off this thing. <sighs> Gonna be trying out my new air saw. I've never actually used this, but uh, just got it. Ingersoll Rand. Hopefully it uh, does the job. This thing cuts like butter. Uh, that is a good time there. It gets a little wonky when you're moving, so you gotta pay attention, but uh, I like that. She's not original anymore. Waiting for my uh, air compressor to fill back up. Then I go inside, cut all the braces out on the inside because they're uh, kind of in the way.
Always mark the lines you're not going to use. I went ahead and measured from the floor to the bottom of my rail here and I got that marked so I can make it match you know to my proposed three inches just I probably don't need to but I figure I play it safe well wow. so I got this to cut still and still the a pillar so now I'm in a position where now I need to make sure that uh, I can catch the roof when it comes free and doesn't fall on the car or fall down inside the car and I'll never get it back out. So preparation, my friends. So once again, I find myself with three left-handed gloves. Can't find any of the rights. I don't know what the hell happens to it. So what I got here is a one by two piece of square tubing across my uh, space here. I got a chain fall. Oh yeah, that's Ivan's uh, Carson top. Sorry, Ivan, I'll get to it one day. Got that centered to my roof, hooked up to one mildly used leg pipe. So now when I cut the roof free, I will have control of everything that's going on there. And I can lower it down as I needed, lift it up as I needed to keep it out of the way. And what this process does is gives me a lot of uh, control over what's going on. I can raise it and lower it, you know, in pretty incremental uh, sections. So it gives me a lot of control over what's going on. Not that I don't have anyone to help me. I, if I put the call out, I'm sure I could get a bunch of people to come over and give me a hand, but this kind of allows me to move at a much slower pace, you know, kind of as I want, and it's much safer. And, uh, you know, you could do this very easily. Chain falls like a hundred bucks at any, you know, cheapy tool store. And, uh, you know, I use them all the time. Definitely recommend it. Let's keep cutting. trying to film a time lapse of this thing. It's a huge pain in the ass having the second uh, phone here. Well, this is a phone. This is a GoPro. You know what I mean. Getting through the wood inside is a little tough. The hacksaw and uh, oak are, they're not really getting along. This is the last cut. Are you excited? I am.
And there you go. Thanks for watching. Next time we'll glue it back together. Please subscribe. Take care.